More and more people are shooting their stuff on phones nowadays. And if you're using an in-camera app, the biggest problem that happens to a lot of people, and I'm not talking about if you're really well versed and you know what you're doing, is that when you start recording or start filming something, it is going to be set to auto exposure and auto white balance. That is a massive problem like you can see right behind me with this shot. So how do we fix it to make it look professional as if it was the same exposure? So I'm gonna show you the most popular technique, doing it the right way, and then I'm gonna show you my preferred, the pro method. So get pumped about that and the tool that made it possible to achieve both results is QT Charts. This is the best utility for DaVinci Resolve right now. Whether you want a shot match at lightning speed or you just wanna QC your content before you put it out and if you don't want it to be flagged on broadcast or stuff like that, QT Charts got you covered and then some, the price is nothing. You can also download the free version if you wanna just play along. The special link is in the description. Check it out and let's roll the intro. All right, so since this is not a color grading tutorial, I just wanna show you like one specific problem to fix. I've already gone ahead and graded the shot, okay? And um, you can watch the video where I've created this look. If you're interested, link is gonna be in the description. All right, so here we are and I'm just going to create a new node and drop a DCTL here called color charts. And then I'm just going to turn on false color so we can like really see what's happening here. So the problem with shooting with something like the iPhone or any of your smartphones is that most of the time, unless you're using like a Blackmagic app or something like that, if you're just shooting with the in-camera app, it's going to set everything to auto, auto exposure, auto white balance. And we can see what's happening here. If you just look at right here, how the exposure is shifting because it's trying to compensate for like what's happening on the inside compared to the outside. And I'm sure all of you guys are familiar with what like auto exposure and white balance means. So how do we correct that? There is a couple of different ways that you would go about it. If you're working in Premiere Pro, Final Cut 10, or even just like in Resolve without knowing the trick that I'm going to talk about, you would fix it like that. So we would go in our keyframes, we would right click and create a dynamic keyframe. And then we will go, let's just say somewhere around here, create another dynamic keyframe. And then maybe this is fine. Now, the reason why we're using this false color uh, that makes it so easy to like spot where we need to create a point is that without it, like look at, it's really hard to see where the change is happening. This makes it very objective like the change started right here and then it drops. So now what I have to do is I can go right here. Actually, you know what? I didn't have to create keyframes right here. So I'm just going to actually delete these. I'm going to click, delete, click, delete. I wanted to create keyframes right here. So let's go ahead and create our first keyframe. And then we're gonna keep moving for backwards until we're here, create another keyframe. And now what I need to do is I need to go right here and go under my HDR palette exposure and then just like raise this up. And now you can just see what we did. We just went about quarter of a stop right here and just like look at how it fixed that problem. And now everything is looking stable. So let's just see if it actually really worked. So I'm going to repeat that and then let's just go through and boom, it was just this simple to fix it. So that was like the first method to attack a problem like that, okay? The second way to do it, let's just hide this and create a new node, will be to use something like a color stabilizer effect. So the whole idea of this is like, it's going to take the lowest point and the highest point and then try to stabilize it. So there is no jump. And basically it'll do the same thing that we manually did, okay? But what you need to know about this tool is that you wanna pick a frame right in the middle of like where this is happening. So again, we can just use this, these keyframes that we've created. And now I'm gonna take this, put it right here, 
set it to something like this, and I'm gonna go ahead and click on live region analysis. And as soon as we do that, that goes ahead and look at this. It did the same exact thing. It just corrected it, okay? And we can basically select, do we wanna stabilize just white balance? Do we wanna stabilize brightness? Do we wanna stabilize both? And here we needed both because there is a color shift that happens. So now if I go right here and turn this on, because this is going to tell us how well it worked. And now let's look at it. It worked flawlessly. You see what it did? Like if I go ahead and turn this off, look at what's happening. And then if I turn it on, boom. So this is a one-click fix. Um, but again, this was also a money tip that I wanted to share with you guys, how you would actually go about like attacking a problem like this. Analyze it objectively. And this is the best way to do it. And then once you create these dynamic keyframes, use that as like your middle point. And then I went and used my stabilizer and boom, it nailed it in the first shot. So there you have it, multiple ways to stabilize your exposure and balance inside Resolve. If you found this video and these tips helpful, do me a favor, smash the like button, subscribe to the channel, check out QT Charts, link is in the description. If you have any content suggestions, let me know. Otherwise, I'll see you in the next one. Peace, fam.